All right, gold and silver are a must in your portfolio. Both of them are expected to hit all-time highs in the next year. But what about metals? Because it's a mixed bag, really. Because when you look at lead and nickel and steel and iron ore, they are down in the negative in the last one year. The gains, though, have come in quite smartly for copper and even better for aluminum and zinc clearly outperforming with 24% of gains in the previous year. All, what's your sense within metals? What are you watching and what would you be your top priority here? Well, we're seeing the divergence between metals used for the uh, the electrification and those used for industrial uh, means um, diverging, and especially those uh, related to uh, to Chinese demand. Uh, the the Chinese stimulus that has been announced within the last month does not seem to be enough at this point, really, to to address the structural issues that China will be facing in the in the coming years, and that has uh, that has basically dented the uh, the demand. I would say for some of these. Uh, uh, in, industrious uh, metals, uh, steel, uh, iron ore, uh, especially. Whereas, if you look at copper, it's it's a different story. The copper demand is has been a China story for many uh, for many years, but it will eventually become more and more become an international story as well, as this electrification continues to gather momentum, and with that, the rollout of uh, grid infrastructure and so on, and adding to that the the tight mine supply that is also expected to emerge over the coming years. Right now, we are we, we are seeing a couple of false starts in, in copper as an example this year, basically because there's a lot of speculative interest uh, waiting to get involved in copper. And we've had a few false starts simply because ultimately supply and demand has to send a, a signal that the price has can go higher. And so far, we haven't really seen that. So uh, for now, it's in a, in a wait and see mode. I'm not really seeing much in terms of price movements in the, in the short term. We need to see some of the inventory levels uh, held at warehouses come down. But uh, over time, it, uh, I'll, I say it's a, it's a longer, long-term bull case uh, for, for that as well. The other is, uh, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit more, the world is still dealing with an overcapacity over uh, in terms of production, the capacity for, for something like steel, and we need to see cutbacks in order for that to be more balanced. So, uh, so for now, the upside story is primarily those uh, based on uh, focusing on the electrification. Mm. And even within that all, is there something that you're picking for the longer term? Sorry, come again. Are you picking anything at all then in case of metals for a longer term? You said short term is not so bullish, but for a long term scenario, is there is there a metal that you would want to add in your portfolio? Almost certainly copper. Uh, I think even okay. at, at these levels, we, we probably reached levels where where it's it's uh, it's ex these levels are, are acceptable. Um, not the highs we had earlier this year, but uh, but these levels, it is I would say it is an area to uh, to start uh, accumulating because I think the 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 downside risks uh, over time is going to be relatively limited there. Mm. Kishore, what's your sense within the metal space? What do you want to add into? I think uh, I like zinc here. Okay. Uh, probably again, uh, uh, it's already rallied, uh, but again we are entering this year into another 160, 164,000 uh, tons of deficit. Uh, though 25 might cover it back, um, I think the backwardation is showing a big story there, I think. Uh, it's a record high backwardation, $58 is, I, I don't, have never seen that kind of backwardation which is showing that some kind of uh, tightness there. Uh, and uh, as he rightly mentioned that uh, uh, both the commodities which are used in electrification has actually going up. and. Uh, uh, stimulus has no impact whatsoever, as yet. whatever, uh, as yet, in the sense because the, the stimulus was aimed at uh, clearing the real estate inventory, hmm. which doesn't create uh, demand. So it's actually uh, a cleanup of what uh, of the problems rather than creating fresh demand, actually. So uh, this is a much longer shot they have taken. Uh, I think uh, direct impact is not there, but still zinc, I think there is another 30% upside. Okay. So. Roughly from 280, we are looking at 450 kind of levels in India. So 30% in upside. next one year, two years? Of course. No, no, no. Next, 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 next 12 months. I think 30% mm -hmm. is upside is, is clearly there. So I think okay. the entire pack, I pick zinc uh, as a best commodity for uh, for next Diwali. Mm. Ajay, copper, zinc, or would you go with aluminum? So I think uh, total base metal uh, up till now was uh, underperforms, we even say, because uh, post-COVID, the concern was to be on uh, we can say foot because already uh, we have seen lockdown and, and nothing was been working in the economy. So rightly, like Kishore told, uh, main focus was the real estate market because whenever we talk about real estate, around 200 uh, sectors are actually been 
impacted uh, positively with the real estate. But now things have been totally changing in last four, five years post-COVID. Mm. Now, every economy has been trying to push uh, the demand from industry side with the uh, interest rate cut and things have been now coming up. So okay. I think uh, definitely uh, we may uh, see copper up till now was underperforming, but slowly and steadily with the EV demand, supply side, everything will definitely going to be changed in 2025. If we rank uh, all base metal, Definitely, I would go with uh, zinc only because zinc uh, already we have seen zinc as one. Zinc as and first then second as then uh, aluminium and last would be uh, copper. copper definitely, okay. but uh, I think uh, slowly and steadily industrial demand would improve as China uh, before New Year itself they have uh, desperately uh, putting money in the economy. What we have never seen in the COVID period also. So I mm. think uh, every economy is working with a uh, interest rate cut scenario and everything. So I think in 2025... You will stay invested in metals for 2025 yeah, as well. We can see a uh, gain like 20, 20 to 25% gain in each item like zinc, uh, aluminium and, and copper. copper as well. All right, Pranav, let me come to you with energy as a space. And that is one area that is in the negative for 2024 until now. Uh, last one year, that is. From these current levels, if you look at 2025, major global banks and brokerages are putting uh, Brent prices to 75, 65... Uh, cities at 60 as well. Uh, how are you looking at a range playing out? Uh, see, frankly speaking, you know, I'm not much positive on the oil prices. If you okay. see what are the developments that have been happening in the Middle East, despite that we have seen this good correction in, in uh, oil prices, the, the prices are down you know, today as well, nearly 6% in negative territory. So unless and unless there is any issues from the supply side, any uh, effects on the supply of this, uh, the, the escalation that has been going on in the Middle East, I don't mm. think we see a bigger price move. Yes, definitely upside week. Uh, you know, it is just stuck in a range downside. 60, 62 dollar has been the base where the prices have been finding some support. And upside, we could see prices moving in the range of dollar 74, 78 level. So uh, chart setup also indicates a little bit on the negative side for crude. We have seen multiple breakdowns as well on the charts. So I'm not mm. much bullish on crude. We may see there's some consolidation range sideways moves in the oil prices, you know, going ahead. But uh, upside looks limited for me in the crude market. Okay. All right. So, well, that's one, uh, one area that can continue to see further declines as well. All this one is to you. Whilst we've spoken precious metals and industrial metals and energy as well, you look at soft commodities also. And within the whole chart that I'm looking at right now, in the last one year, if there have been any strong gains, it has been palm oil, coffee and cocoa. The rest of the commodities really haven't done so great. Rubber is another one, perhaps. Anything that you're picking up in this space? Well, only that we are entering uh, the Northern Hemisphere winter with an, uh, following another bumper crop. Basically means that uh, that there is be, there's going to be ample supplies of the, the major corn, wheat and soybeans uh, into the coming, coming win Northern Hemisphere winter. And uh, that's basically keeping uh, prices under pressure. There has been some a few a uh, few isolated scares uh, this year, but uh, they have not been been big enough really to uh, to unravel the, uh, or the or to lift prices. So uh, relatively weak pricing uh, into the coming months for for the grain sector. The soft sector we are also seeing some signs of improvement, especially something like cocoa. We are seeing cocoa bean arrival at the uh, ports in West Africa exceeding the, the, the level we saw last year. So, so prices there had started to come down as well. But uh, mm -hmm. whether we're going to see a, a bigger slump from here where we still more than double the long-term average is probably a little bit questionable. It will take longer time for these balances to, uh, to alleviate or to sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. Point that. I have one last minute. I want to come to each one of you and ask you on what your top commodity would be as a trade in the next year. Kishore, let's start with you. Of course, silver. Uh, silver is, uh, is the place to be. Ajay. I think that could be a two commodity. One is silver and zinc. All right, silver and zinc. Prana, what are you betting the most on? Uh, I would be going for a 50-50 in gold and silver. And <laughs> if I want to take more risk, I would add zinc to it as well. <laughs> All right. All what, what would you say is the best place to be in sense of commodities in the year to come? Well, if the if the rally in the metals continues, then uh, you have to focus on platinum as well. It's uh, it's a very sp small metal, but it's uh, it's very tra trading relatively cheap. At the same time, uh, maybe a little bit of a, 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 a wild a wild card. The natural gas uh, natural gas price in the U.S. still dead cheap. Uh, demand is still going up. Uh, I, I could see some so, some a surprise pick up there. The in natural gas. AI is rolling out, data centers are building, uh, electricity demand is rising. Someone needs to produce that power. 
in the US that's going to come from gas. So I'm, I'm bullish on gas as well. All right. So silver, gold, zinc, natural gas, platinum, that's the whole bouquet of commodities that you could add to your portfolio for the next one year if you're looking to add commodities and, of course, make money out of that. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today and taking us through on what really can be seen within commodities as a sector, the fundamentals therein, and, of course, targets that you can watch out for. And that's with wishing all of you a very happy Diwali and a very festive cheer going forward. With that, that's all the time that we have on this show. But stay tuned in CNBC TV 18 as news continues.